And one of the greatest treasures God has given is a land that he, for whatever reasons, chose for his land. A special place. Now, to be honest with you, if you visit Israel for the first time, sometimes you're going to look around and say, okay, it's not the trees. What is it? But I can also tell you that it is a land that is no longer barren. It is a land in which the dry bones have come alive. It is a land in which the desert is now blooming. It's an extraordinary place because it is a place where God has put his hand. And the scripture tells us that those who bless Israel will be blessed and those who curse Israel will be cursed. A nation's relationship to Israel is not political, it's biblical. And I don't believe God ever, ever breaks a covenant that he makes. And he made a covenant. And he says that if we bless Israel, we'll be blessed. If we curse Israel, we'll be cursed. Has that expired? I say no. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have a love for Israel, an appreciation, and even a commitment. But I also would be the first to tell you that if we don't make some serious changes in the way that we train up the next generation of young Americans, there are a lot of young Americans who think that the best thing would be for Israel to give up land, turn it over to their enemies, and that's not true. The best thing to happen for Israel is that the gospel would take hold in both Israelis and in Arabs. And that the common ground to bring peace to the Middle East would not be something that diplomats would have a clue about. It would be something that would happen not at a peace table, but rather at the foot of the cross. One for Israel has set up the only Hebrew-speaking Bible college on the planet. And not to go in and try to browbeat people, because that wouldn't work there, let me assure you. But to lovingly build relationships and to use biblical truth and fact to bring people to the point where they realize who the Messiah is and how Yeshua is the fulfillment of all of the prophecies. Several years ago, a young father took his daughter to Israel because he wanted her to see the country, but he wanted her to see Yad Vashem, which is the memorial dedicated to the victims of the Holocaust. The little girl was 11 years old, a little young to go to Yad Vashem because it's overpowering. And in those days, it was even more overpowering. They've actually kind of dialed it back because I think so many people were traumatized by how vivid it was. He decided that he would take his daughter and if she became too emotional by the things that she saw that happened in the Holocaust, he would just take her out. But he led his daughter through Yad Vashem and she saw the chronological order of how things began to go that almost brought the annihilation of the Jewish people on the face of the earth. The father took his little girl through the portion of Yad Vashem in which Auschwitz was portrayed. And she saw those pictures, some of which showed the bodies Thousands of them stacked up because there was just no way to deal with them any other way. Looked like sticks, not human beings. Stripped of all dignity and respect and ultimately life. And as he completed the tour, taking his daughter through Yad Vashem, they came to the exit. And there at the exit, there was a guest book to be signed. And the father looked over his daughter's shoulder. As she took the pen from his pocket and she started filling in the blanks of the guest book, her name, 
address. And below that, there was a place for comments. And the father looked to see what would she say, what would be her comment. Did she get it? Did she understand what this was all about? And the daughter wrote these words. Why didn't somebody do something? That's all she wrote, those words. Why didn't somebody do something? And with that, she put the pen back in the father's pocket. For the next five hours, she didn't utter a word. But that father has never had to worry as to whether or not she got it. The reason I know that is because that daughter was my daughter. I ask you, as you're here tonight, do something. And tonight you'll learn what you can do and how you can be the one to do the something.